Okay, can you hear me better? A lot of static. Well, I, I was wondering, I had a program that was uh, bogged down here, so I had to just kill it. My mail program got stuck, and I wasn't picking up my single So we should be better. I can hear that someone is listening to the and it's feeding back into the system. If you're if you're listening to this call on a speaker, then do star six and mute yourself out so we don't hear your background noise like washing dishes and things. Okay. You got the call going, Tom? Yeah, I got the, I got the recording going. So you you were going to ask a question? I was going to ask a question regarding the. SS521. I know the whole concept here is that we have to cancel all the insurance relationships we have with the de facto United States. I did an SS521 back in 2006, uh, just because I was kind of I was involved in a court case at the time, and I was just desperate to do anything to get these clowns out of my life. And someone came up with that idea, so I went and did that. I'm just wondering where that leads me now with this new process that Patrick has come up with. Uh, you'll have to ask Patrick that, but my my guess is is that you 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 do the our revoking and it overrules whatever you did with the uh, SS 521. Okay. I'm not using that form at all. I used their form at that time because I didn't know any better, uh -huh. and I'd rather do something to just terminate it all and do it on a private side completely. All right. Okay. Thanks. I, it makes sense. I'll just listen. I'll okay. mute myself out now so I don't mess anybody up. Thank you. Okay. Any, uh, anybody else want to bring something up? I, th I think Patrick will be able to be on the call tonight. He wasn't so sure last night, but I think he will be able to. Play. I'm in. Yes. Does anybody? Yeah, I got a question about the. Uh, the 1099C versus the OIDs. Are, are we doing the 1099Cs since they are their documents, or are we going to do modified forms in, 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 in this game? Well, actually, it looked like we're back to 1099Cs. If you read his new uh, trade agreement and termination agreement, he's giving himself the authority to use those forms. Now, it did did you see that he uh, he loaded uh, the revisions of those two forms that we discussed yesterday? Yes, I've seen the revisions to the trade agreements, but I hadn't seen any revisions to the 1099-C at all. No, I, I didn't say there was a revision to the 1099-C. I think it's under, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's under what, number four on the trade agreement? Yes, it's, it's just there's a there's a, a, a paragraph in there that in the trade agreement you you state that you do have permission to use the 1099 1099 forms. Okay. Now it looks I have to check it more carefully, but it looks like the uh, main addition to the revision is to uh, add the uh, the zip code as your depository number, your basically your bank routing number. Mm -hmm. Tom, what did you just give reference to? I, I missed that. I apologize. Um, are you, you're on the Yahoo group, right? Yes. I sent out an email about 15 minutes ago announcing the two new files. Okay. They're very recent. Um, I just downloaded them about five minutes ago. Um, Are they the new files concerning the trade agreement, or, or there's something newer than that? Yes, the trade agreement. It's a revision of the trade agreement. Okay. Okay. Yes, this is Patrick. I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Hi, Patrick. Did you get connected all right? Yeah. Well, you sound different. Well, it's 
uh, coming through the computer. So, Bash, uh, yeah, it's a uh, bug. Different, uh, yeah. yeah. You sound like you're not phoning it in from space, but you sound like you're right in the room. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, put up two new, uh, basically, these are pretty much uh, my uh, trade agreements and my termination, court termination. Now, we, I claim to be a private American international banker, but what proof do we have that we are a private American international banker? Well, the proof that you have is your American mailbox. It can receive international mail, too. Mail is money. That means that that is your depository. And basically, all banks have a depository. So, therefore, you are a private American international banker. Pretty simple. Now you've got the proof in the pudding. You've got an account number. Now they can't say that you don't have some authority. And like one of the guys gave me a feedback there and said, yes, uh, it's a nine-digit number. Is basically, uh, and it's in the international, all nine digits are account numbers, international banking law. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, needed to throw a little proof in there to give our substantiation that we have this authority. Hey, Patrick? How does that work with more than one person being in the same area using that same number? That's not a problem? Different name. Okay. Different name. Yep, I understand. Room number. Yeah. Yeah, you're still getting your mail in that mailbox. So basically that mailbox... There's a bank box that can uh, give out uh, more than one person. The nine digits that you're... Think about this, people, please. Your local bank, how many digits does it have? Nine digits. How many accounts does it have in that bank? Thousands. What if you have more than one mailbox? That's like your routing well, number, you not your account number. You banks. You figure it out. I'm not going to tell you how to do your shit. <laughs> I mean, come you on. Know. Some of these damn questions are fucking ludicrous. I'm getting fucking fed up with this shit. You guys can't start thinking for yourself a little on this shit. I'm done with you. Hello, Patrick. How you doing? Oh, shit. Well, I'm trying to keep my cool. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. This is uh, Libram X, alias Marvell. Check this out. Uh... You have a transit number, you have an account number, Uh-oh. and they usually do stuff in reverse. So what you're doing, you're actually giving everybody a, a very big, thick clue where they can pretty much write off their own checks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, because when you said that, that just popped in my head. You can pretty, wait a minute, yeah, guys, we're the creators. And girls, ladies and gents, we're the creators here. 
And what the man actually said is, uh, you can basically write your own checks. Good night. You know, yeah, yeah, you can you can do it yourself. You don't like like when he was saying uh, a couple of weeks ago, the guy instead of doing something in court, he told Patrick, "Hey, you can pretty much do this on yourself." Well, I I did. I wrote okay. one last okay. week, but it wasn't international, so I got to remedy that th- tomorrow and, and make it well, international. We, we did, yeah, we well, well actually, if you, if you got your if you got your ninety eight number, that is international. <laughs> Right. You can you can put a couple of digits in front of it if it don't make nine. Okay, I mean, come on, people. The, the man, look, we in a way we kind of like wearing Patrick out. All he wants you to do is be creative and think a little bit. That's it. He's giving you the clues and some really good ones too. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, we don't live in the well, district of Columbia. Know. Okay. We don't live in Columbia. I mean, that's that's a federal zone okay. by itself. We don't care about that. You know, all this stuff belongs to us. They the ones that did any everything to us. All we got to do is just believe it now and believe in ourselves. Okay. Okay. And get that. Let I'm going. Talk, okay. I'm going. <laughs> this is Patrick. Let me talk. Okay. You need to come in. You need to address your trade agreement, because until you get the authority over your trade agreement, get that in place and have authority to countersign for your uh, bankrupt person because he's operating under secret counterfeit certificates. Okay? All of the assets are basically held away from us because of that secret. Those secret counterfeit certificates. That counterfeit birthing certificate. Hell, you had a birthing at the hospital. You had a hospital birth certificate. Well, a lot of people, they didn't give it to them. But you also can have that recorded in your Bible. And that one stands superior to any counterfeit document. The Bible is the law. And if you had a hospital birth certificate under gold seal, you have that one standing right there that you were... birthed upon the land. Now, by being birthed upon the land with your little feet prints, you were banked on the land. Therefore, you are a banker. Now, Who, who's ever rattling who's ever rattling paper and holding conversations in the background and uh, please do star six and mute yourself out. Sorry about that, Doctor. Yeah, so you set up your trade agreement first, then you can turn around and utilize the 1099 A, Bs, and Cs, but you have to do them under a countersigning by your bank cashier or clerk. Under a countersigning. Until you basically terminate the trade agreement. And both of mine are going to be inputted uh, tonight. I've got them printed out now. Just what I put up there. And then I will send these out by fax to the appropriate people. But I need to write out a on the termination one, I need to make court orders coming from my clerk of the court to those entities, the secretary of the state, the birthing state, the attorney general, 
of the state that I'm living in, which is also my birthing state, the Attorney General of the United States of America, the Secretary of the State of the United States of America, that they also wear dual hats, so they're going to be under uh, the gun to basically terminate all the false certificates, the counterfeit certificates that are out there. You guys don't realize how powerful that one document when I put it up there. One girl does know how powerful it is because she gave it to the attorney in a court case. That document that I put up about conspiracy to defraud. The overt action document. And basically they drew the drug deal for her son out of court. They just missed all charges. Yeah, when you allege an overt conspiracy, now you have them. And when you understand what, uh, in a conspiracy, that these guys can go to jail for a certain long period of time. And they're all operating in a conspiracy to defraud the American people. So we have to, after you do your termination, one, then you turn it over and you have to put on the other hat. Your right-hand person now becomes your clerk of the court, and now he's going to have to write up, or she is going to have to write up your court orders to those individuals, to the treasurer, to the secretary of the state, to the attorney general, to the Church of Rome, to, uh, like in my case, the Roman Catholic Church. Also, because there's a Sesta K account out there that with the baptismal, with that counterfeit baptism, because we were born, we were baptized in blood when we were born. The counterfeit baptism is the counterfeit one with water. It's a phony one, basically, but it allowed the church then to take control of you, to put a claim in against your assets. And it, the assets are being held in a Sesta K account. Our treasury accounts are sitting there. Also, they're not as a Sesta K. They are basically in a depository account. But with just the trade acceptance, you can continue to operate out here and write your 1099 OIDs, 1099As, and everything else. If you want to, the best thing is to turn around and terminate this because now we have a bank number. We have proof that we are an international banker by our zip code plus our four-digit number. That is our mailbox. That is the American Post box number or a depository number. Now you are a banker, and you're in the private. And per the 11th Amendment, we got back our court 
of equity in the private. So we stand as a superior court to these counterfeit judges and everything. But you have to go into their court and claim a conspiracy to defraud and that they are counterfeiting documents and that you will bring in the Secret Service and the CID if need be. But they can't, the CID and the Secret Service cannot come in until you request them and until you know that you are a private international banker and that you have your proof that you are one. See, all these people have been running around here fighting the damn zip code shit that was put out there by the deceivers to get you to throw away your bank account number, your private international bank account number. Get rid of that. Then you have no proof that you are a private international banker, do you? I mean, I'm getting sick and tired of ha- listening and 99% of these people out here that are still hooked on all this garbage out here while it's over here with the Queen of England or it's over here with this guy or it's down in Puerto Rico or basically we need to go to the uh, codes of law. The codes of law are counterfeit laws. They do not apply to the living. And they don't even apply to the civil government. They apply only to the counterfeit government. You need to start really hammering this stuff. If you want out of this system. Okay. I'm throwing it back to you, Tom. Okay. So so are you going for the termination right away then, right? Well, I'm going to put both of them in, okay? I'm going to sign both of them tonight, stamp and seal them, and then I'm going to put my termination document out there, and then I'm going to work on my court orders as the clerk of the court to write up my orders so that I can get those out in the mail and then basically they have three days to honor those. Right, and because of the terminations they're delivered. Because of the terminations you're not going to fool with 1099s. No. Right, okay. Well, we can still do 1099s because when you read what I have there about a banker You can pull up that damn document, okay? Read the definitions. Okay? We're operating out here with commercial paper. Yes. Okay? We can put a 1099 OID in using our uh, bank uh, federal zone number, our, uh, our bank number, private international bank number, and then we can also utilize our 98 series number on that 1099 OID and get our discounting of their damn commercial paper out here so that we are now utilizing lawful currency. So until they deliver finally deliver the whole liquidated account, we can use the 1099s. No, you're still going to probably have to do it because oh. you're operating in a foreign state. Okay. But you will place most of your filings in under the 98, your foreign grant or trust number. People got questions? 
Does this help the people with the mortgages? They know exactly what they want to do now? Pat and Gita? I think so. Um, I, I have to write it out, but I'm pretty sure I know what I have to do. Okay. Yes, you just have to do a countersigning on the back of it. And right. then you can do you can do counter claims and counter a counterman on that uh back of that document too, coming from your cashier slash clerk of the bank. I I know I could probably do an OID for what I've put in um You mean getting back your principal and interest? Yeah. Well, let's just try and get the damn mortgage closed down first. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I don't even care about that. I would rather just get the the other closed down. Would I bother with a 1099-A? No, I'd throw a 1099-C in there when you uh, terminate that uh, mortgage contract. Put it in there. You're canceling the debt. Okay. Yeah, slip that in there along with, and you can say, uh, when you do your countersigning on the back, uh, one of your counterclaims is that basically this is to be uh, terminated or canceled in full based upon the attached 1099-C. Okay. I, I think it's best to keep it simple. Yeah. You don't have to make anything complicated. I mean, don't try and go out there and start using UCC uh, 4906 or what, 15, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, codes of law of California or codes of law of Iowa or whatever. Stay away from that. You give that, you're giving credence to a counterfeit. You're staying in the dream world. You know, if you think about it, when you first signed a promissory note for a mortgage, you could have turned it over and countersigned the back, but uh, the attorney sitting there, if someone was calling, never let you do it. But that would have completed the transaction to begin with. You're damn right. You would have taken <laughs> care of it right then and there. So that's all you're doing is just correcting, doing it right. <laughs> yeah, you're giving them the payment right then and there. Your cashier is saying, here, take it out of the account. So that answers the question, how do we go buy a new property? Countersign it. Now, let them think that, they're, that they've got you, and then you just turn it over and do a countersigning of it and give them the 1099-A. I, 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 I think a realtor will give you an invoice. What? Some kind of invoice is really what you need. I'm I'm searching for that too, so I know it can be done. It's the mortgage is the invoice. The, yeah, the mortgage and the note. I should go through with this home mod and then just turn it over, countersign it, and give it back to them. Say we're done. Yes, we're done here. Like I said last night, it's the burning match theory. <laughs> but then you here you go. The, then you need the 1099C to, um, to, to, you know, sort Cancel of. Cancel the debt. Register it with with the IRS, you know. Well, you, that, you, yeah, you're, you, you're putting, but you're canceling the debt. Now you've transferred the funds over to them. Now the IRS is will be after them, not after yes. you. That's it. But they're, they're going to be responsible for the liability, the actual FRNs or whatever. And they have to pay, t uh, t and finally they have to pay the tax because that's the other reason why the mortgage happened. Uh, Gene Keating found that was because nobody ever paid the tax. No, they've got you paying the tax. No, I mean, and, and the initial transaction or something. I, I, I don't quite understand that part, but I know initially there was something that was unpaid could have been a, a dollar or whatever, and it just keeps the thing going. 
So by doing the 1099C, you're you're obligating them to do the 1099 OID themselves. And if they don't honor that, you can you can come back in a process to say, well, well, what? Why isn't the? Uh, I mean, you should send it to like the financial officer, I suppose. And if somebody, then their attorney will come after you, say you, you're not doing anything. You can say, well, why aren't you going after the your boss and and getting him to do the 1099 OID? Well, you know, that's his responsibility. No, basically, number one, it's your responsibility as the cashier. Okay? But we're not but in the public. Those are for the attorney. public. You fire that damn attorney. That attorney is there just as a bloodsucker. Well, you can't handle were... being your own cashier. You don't deserve to be out here. No, the attorney for the bank. You can't fire him. He's just a damn... You. You can tell him to get the hell out of here. Yeah, you don't have a contract with him. But. That's right. Get him out of there. He has no say in the damn thing anyway. He's on the other side of the table. Okay, it's just like uh, Joe Blow comes up and stands next to Tom Smith on the other side of the counter and you're trying to do a trade across the counter. Right, and basically, right. Yeah, and he's putting his two cents in. Yeah, trying to give you another deal, another deal, right. another deal. Well, you conditionally accept that on proof of claim that the, that, that yeah, the, say, that the chief financial officer table, can't. If you, you just tell that attorney if he's got some money on the table, then he can basically have better, uh, if he doesn't, then he better shut up and get out of there. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, on a loan mod, loan modification. Do you, because you know sometimes those loan modifications. Would you, would you suggest signing every page on, on the back, like a I don't know if it's an actual renegotiated note or not, but would you sign each one, each page, or just the one where you have to sign and get it notarized? You just put a notation on the very first page. C the countersigning on the last page of this contract. And then use that thing that you got, that last one you put up there. Yeah, use it. Make it your own, okay? I gave you an example, okay? okay. I want you to think for your fucking self, okay? It's, a, it's also called the banker's acceptance. Well, you can just sign it, too, can't you? You can just use your signature. I mean, that's just as good as You it. need to basically give an account where the money is coming from. What certificate is paying for this? Okay. That would be and your see, first... You are the you are the indemnified right now. So, that counterfeit certificate, certificate of live birth, because you already had a real birthing document. And that counterfeit document normally comes about 90 days after you were born. So basically it's giving birth to a counterfeit person. So it's got to be a counterfeit document. It's like a negotiable instrument. Yeah, so you could use your birth certificate number or your social. Yeah, basically, put them both down, okay? Cool. The accessing one is through your Social Security account. They've already got it on the damn document. Don't on use the dashes. Huh? Uh, don't, don't use dashes. The dashes. Just put it down, whatever they put on there, Okay. It's a nine-digit account number. And then you 1099-C with that or no? Just send it in to them and they're kind of screwed there. Yeah, and basically, or 1099-A to take it out of your real assets that are being held wow. in the depository under your certificate of live birth number. Hello? 
Uh, uh, please, uh, whoever just answered the phone, do star six and get off the call. Get your mic off the call. Hello. Okay. We really have to think it through, Patrick, but it, yeah, this has simplified things down a great deal. It will if you read the document and understand what is going on and then ask legitimate questions if you don't understand. Right. But to sit there and not read the document and just ask questions that is total stupidity. So, Patrick, how do you actually stay out of court? You countersign the damn charges before you get hauled into court. That's for the original charging instrument? Yes. Or you come in and you basically do the countersign and then you claim conspiracy to defraud. Just handing that, that overt conspiracy letter. Yes, that or the other one that I put up there about uh, the court scenario. The Trump card. The Trump card, yeah. You revoke all public underwritings. Then you allege conspiracy to do fraud by the using of counterfeit instruments. Got it. And then, if need be, you will move this court action up to a civil court at the federal level, and you will be the plaintiff, and they will be the defendant, and you will take them down at that point in time because they're going to go to jail because you can, if you understand what you're doing, you can prove that they are operating in a conspiracy to defraud not only you, but America. They don't want to go there because they know they're violating the law. I don't think that's real important is to really understand what we're doing here. It's real easy to just read these things and just kind of get it, but you better know what you're doing. You better know what you're, what's, what's being said. Yeah, see, you're operating under private international law, okay? You are an international. Your mailbox can receive mail from England, from Nigeria, from uh, Russia, wherever. So that's an international mailbox but it's located on American soil. So it's in a, you are a private American international banker. I don't know how I can make this any damn simpler than what that what I just said there. Well, no, you, you, you're making sense. It's just wrapping your head around. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah, we have to imagine... You've got to You've got to flush all the garbage that you've been inundated out here, all the false information, and stop listening to all this other garbage that these other nitwits are putting out here, and keep it fucking simple. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. So what what I'm hearing is it almost sounds like it really boils down to a signature, some 1099As and 1099Cs. If you're still in the system. Right. That's me. (laughs) You're a banker because mail is money. You have to have your trade agreement in. 
people before you can do the, the agencies? Well, you should have it in place so that you can have your substantiation, your proof that you, the living, are not the liable party. The straw man, basically, is what we refer to it. I got a question. The bankrupt. Forget right. that straw man shit. He's a bankrupt. Uh, with the trade agreement, where is it? Where do we send it to the areas? Are the what? I have an out hour district local uh, birthing station. <coughs> didn't understand the question. They didn't understand the question. Oh. It's a private document. You don't need to send it to anybody. Okay. All right. You tell them I've got my private document here. Basically, you show me where you need to see it. Little Susie and Tommy, show me yours. I'll show you mine. Yeah, because my understanding is the highest form of law is a private contract. So they, that's higher than their laws. Yes. The highest form of law is living law, okay? Law of the living, not of the dead. And see, all these other people out here right now are in the dead world. The vampires. They want something for nothing. Now go watch that 2004 movie named Something for Nothing. It's a remake of the movie Daniel Webster, The Devil and Daniel Webster. So that was one of I... the key books that was written back in 19, or 1820 to keep the foreign uh, money changers out of this country. So I just want to make sure I heard you right. That new trade agreement thing you put up there, did you say you were going to fax all those to everybody or you were just going to keep that to yourself because that's your private contract? I've got my private contract, and if they need to see it, I will show it to them at that point in time. Okay, got it. I will make out after I do my uh, termination court order and see, now I am a bank, B-A-N-C, court with that same uh, American Bank Depository number. So my judge number is my zip code plus four. All judges have a number, right? Mm -hmm. You've got yours now. This is great. Yeah, so basically I've got a on the do document there that I had up uh, for the termination, uh, down for the where I have that I'm the chief judge, I'm going to have to put my account number down there too. <coughs> As my judge's number. Yeah, pretty damn simple. Are you sure you don't work for the government contract? <laughs> no, I am definitely not working for the damn government. You're not going to get us all in trouble, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I am out here trying to get everybody thrown in jail. I'm giving you shit, Doctor. Yeah, if I wanted, if I wanted to do that, I would have been out here trying to push you to write bonds, mm. because that's the fastest way you can get thrown in jail. Because you do not have the authority to write bonds. As a private banker, you do not put bonds out there. That's right. You operate with the lawful currency. 
the assets of the land. But isn't it really, when it all boils down, isn't it really, isn't it just data entry that they're doing? No, it's a lot more than that. They're trying to get your real substance away from you. They're trying to get you to volunteer, voluntarily give up your real substance under a false debt scenario. That's the contract you made to travel then. What? That's that's the contract you unknowingly made with the devil then. Yeah. And basically, you have not gotten very much pleasure out of this shit. I can guarantee you that, because I haven't. We were supposed to have the pursuit of happiness. And we haven't been having that pursuit out here for a long time. We've been controlled by what they want us to do. They're controlling our will. Just like in the movie, The Adjustment Bureau. You don't have free will. You only think you have it. You're being controlled in every which way possible out here. By all the fictions, your family, your churches, all of these entities are basically fictions out here right now. Because they're all tied into the counterfeit world. How can they show you any love when they can't even love themselves? Okay, it's back in your hand, Tom. Okay. Any more from our questions, guys? I got a question. Sure. The question is about the uh, modified. Well, you know what? I don't even want to know about none of that. All I want to know is I'm, I'm using the uh, 10, 1099 OID so that I can uh, terminate my um, initial contract with my certificate of live birth. Is, is, is that correct? No. You've got to do your termination. Your trade termination. You have to take it through a bankruptcy court, your private bankruptcy court. You don't use their forms to do this. This is all in the private. That's what the bankruptcy judge told the guys down in South Carolina. You you can do this yourself. You're a private banker. You're a private court. Go do it yourself. (coughs) I've given you the document here. Tried to make it laid out so you could try and get some understanding. And I tried to keep it simple. It's only two pages. And then it's countersigned on the back of the second page by your clerk of the court. Uh, Patrick, the word secret you have here with the E on it. Um, I, the dictionary. I guess I haven't looked it up in Anderson, but the other ones don't have that entry. They uh, they have had the word secret, which uh, we're not we're not using. You know, 
so we're not oozing any liquid. Is, is there a special meaning with the E on the end of it? Yes, there is a special meaning with the E on the end of it. Okay. okay. And it's per that uh, one document that I had up there. Uh, uh, oh, I should go look at those definitions again. Okay. Uh, just a second. I'll tell you which one it is here. It's basically the uh, conspiracy plus Rev 2. You pull up that document, and you will see that I put the definition right in there. Okay, right in there. I, I need to go over these things several times so that they become second nature. Patrick, on that uh, conspiracy you just mentioned, when you sign on the back by the clerk of the court, is that uh, me, the clerk of the court, you don't have to have the clerk of the, the real clerk, clerk of the court that we're used to, do we? I would sign it basically uh, when I'm going to sign mine is Mr. Patrick Devine without the semicolon in it. Oh, As okay. the banker, I put my semicolon in after my first name. Oh, okay. That now basically states that there are two different persons in that bank. The master, which is my spirit, and then my right-hand person, which is my uh, person of my clerk. Okay. Yeah, secret was in red five. Okay. Any more, guys? Yeah, this no, is I just, I just have a comment. Um, I'm, I'm looking over the, the private um, international bank court um the termination and you know I, I i hadn't had a chance to really look through it but i'm looking through it now and i'm wondering how i'm going to make this um these court orders but i have to say that patrick you did everything for us and and i'm amazed and and just like want to thank you yeah it's not that hard to make up a court order Okay? Yeah. I mean, there's examples out here of people getting a court order back from the clerk of the court. Mm hmm Just take something along that line and make it your own. Right. And then the same thing when you do a, uh, there's a form out there for uh, going to the U.S. Marshals when you want to do a warrant. The form is uh, basically that they have is, uh, let's see, where in the hell have I got that? It's uh, B-264, and I think you can get that off the bankruptcy site. Mm -hmm. And then just make one up, similar in that regard, and you come in with a... Uh, your bank uh, number, your court number, your private court number on there, which is going to be your zip code plus your four-digit number. Okay. And then you can have the U.S. Marshals go and seize all of that assets for you. Terminate 
the contracts. If the Secretary of State doesn't do it, you send the U.S. Marshals there to go and pull all your documents out of their records. You know, it, things are coming to a head here because I think, you know, we've gotten so involved in in the information and it's and it's just going to take one court case for them to get their act together. No, it's going to take quite a few court cases basically <laughs> when the people everybody has to do their own court case, okay? Uh-huh. It's not I can do my court case and everybody basically goes on behind me. No, that ain't the deal. No, You've got no. You got to do your own thing. You're an individual. Well, that. But I mean, I mean, as a group, we start falling in line, and they know we mean business. Yes, but we're all in different locations, and actually, we're coming at them from a, a lot of different directions, mm-hmm. which I, I think is going to help too. If we concentrate it all in one court, we drive one judge bait crazy, but the rest of them are free to do their counterfeiting. Okay, right back Does to Does everybody you. understand what the word secret means? Actually, it's, it's actually secret, and it makes makes sense because it's... Uh, it's it's, when it's you're applied hiding, to hiding. anything. Let me let me read what it says. Applies to any making away of property, which puts it unlawfully out of reach of a creditor. Right. They took these secret certificates out here, and they are counterfeit, and they unlawfully took our assets out of our reach because we are the creditor. It's like secreting. It goes on. It goes on. Maybe by putting ill or legal impediments in the way by which he is prevented from getting possession in order to affect payment. See bankruptcy. They turn your artificial person into a bankrupt. That's what happened in 1933. They made everybody a bankrupt that basically was under a certificate of live birth. They unlawfully took our assets out of the reach, our reach, as a creditor. to utilize it for their benefit and gains. Yes. And that is a conspiracy to defraud not only you, the creditor, but also the country, because now they're counterfeiting the national currency of the country. The national currency of the country does not have... 3% 3% inflation attached to it per year. You do not inflate it, but you can inflate a counterfeit piece of paper out here. Because it's all hot wind or hot breath or whatever. It's just a balloon that's ready to bust. And then see, you've got the word secret, S-E-C-R-E-T-E. Well, basically, who is over all of these uh, certificates and licenses? The secretary of the state. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
make him president. It's looking right. like DeLon Hillary in there. Yeah. Look, look like all the American definitions are, are just this uh, discharge thing, but the British have it as also uh, another a synonym for the word hide. So if you're secreting an asset away in bankruptcy, you're hiding the asset in a bankruptcy. Yeah. Yeah. You're secretly hiding it. They've taken it away from our reach as we are. See, 99% of the damn debt that's in this country belongs to the people. It's owed to the people. Not to China, not to Japan. It's owed to the people. That the only creditors you hear about coming forward are China and Japan. Stephen, you had a question too? Yeah, I was just going to make a comment. I was just going to say, like, there's a lot of information we have to learn to be the curator, which is the top of the pyramid. we got to climb that pyramid with knowledge. Right. And Patrick's providing it. He's making it easy. That Thank you very much. Um, you know, we should all have, like, 75 pages of notes, but... It, it it would be good to just start from the beginning and listen to the whole thing over again from two months ago or even one month ago. But yeah, it's it's all got to sink in because he's told it all. You know, I understand it. It's just I'm glad that I'm here every week to hear more. Yeah, I understand the principles, but it's like you have to go out there and start practicing it before you can make it part of your system that where, where you can respond automatically correctly in that each situation. Yeah, I, my, my question is, is like, yeah, we know it's counterfeit and we know it's not really logical or it's not part of our character to go along with a counterfeit, but we sort of have to in order to stay out of jail like what he's saying. So maybe Patrick can make a comment about dealing with the counterfeit and just get over it type thing. Can he can he make a comment? Well, basically, you just come in there and uh, uh, you allege the counterfeit in that court, okay? Yeah. If they if if you should never get into court, okay? You should be able to sign, do a countersigning on that document, and if you even want to put a counterclaim or a counter uh, a counterman on the back of that instrument before you go to court, you do it. Right. Now you slid it across the counter. Now it's in their hands. Like I said last night, it's the burning match theory. He who holds the document has to make the document do something. If they don't do something and respond back to you, then they're the ones that are going to get burned. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Um, ironically, I just was poking around. Hello? I think my internet is up, and I'm going to have to... Okay, Chris, you on there? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, right now, in Europe, they're actually uh, reviewing anti-counterfeiting trade agreements. Yeah. I just thought it was kind of interesting that you're kind of matched up on the other side of that as, uh, you know, creating a trade agreement that is dealing with uh, counterfeiting. So when you stop and think anti-counterfeiting, we're creating an anti-counterfeiting trade agreement. Right. We're coming in and claiming that these guys are operating in counterfeit. 
We're proving, yeah. we're giving proof to the pudding, okay, that they have been doing this. Anybody they to are operating in a conspiracy to defraud the yeah. country out here and the people. I'll put this in the window for everybody to look at. It's, it's just kind of ironic that we're doing the same subject matter. Yeah, okay. and see, uh, like I put that one document up there yesterday about the National uh, Banking Act of 1863, I think it was, and then also uh, uh, that the uh, Secret Service was set up in 1865 to combat counterfeiting. It was initially started under Buchanan, which he was the president before Lincoln, but it didn't get put into play until Lincoln got into office. But it's grown so massively out of proportion because they, the money changers and everything kept slipping different things in through the Congress and buying off the Congress people out there to get a vote and put these things in as a counterfeit law. And then the people think that all these counterfeit laws are real laws. How ludicrous is it that they can come out and tell you you've got to wear a damn stinking seatbelt? You want to go flying through the windshield? That's your prerogative. I basically ruled one pickup one time, and I probably would have been damaged a lot more if I would have had my seatbelt on, but I rolled with the pickup. I knew it was going, so I was going to roll with it. I came out of it okay. Even got the pickup back and basically pounded a few things out, put a windshield in it, put it back on the road. Can't keep a good man down, the old saying goes. Hey, I, I got T-boned by a 69 T-bird in a, in a Volkswagen doing a paper route for the Chronicle out here. And if I was wearing a seatbelt, it would have killed me. Yeah. So Pat, I got thrown into it. Like, go ahead. If they stop you for breaking that law, what do you tell them? You say I'm driving for pleasure. Okay. Where's your law that says basically you have a right to infringe upon my pleasure? Okay. Safe to ask for the damage party. Oh, you read the document that I put up there about the court uh, trade agreement. Okay? Okay. It says that common law, the right of banking, belongs to the individuals and is exercisable at pleasure. Pleasure is a key word in understanding out here. You're not operating in business. You're operating in pleasure when you go to town. Now, if you threw a, a herd of goats in the back of your car and took them to town, to, uh, basically, then you might be doing a little business. Somebody, somebody's breathing. But see, in the movie, The International, as long as you are not causing harm, they cannot go after you under state laws. A private banker doing a banking business without special privileges or authority from the state. 
They have no jurisdiction, no authority over you. Knowing what the words say... I'd like to know where the page is where I can actually live by somebody. It's a big thing. Where you can what? Excuse me. May I butt into the conversation? Go ahead. Um, Patrick, I'm new to the situation, and I would just like to ask, um, where do I actually go to actually take a look at the documents that you're actually putting out here? Tom will tell you, I just put up, uh, are you on the call? Uh, are you on Yahoo or are you on Skype? No, um, uh, I'm not on Skype. I'm here with Don uh, Graham, lawyer, and basically I'm just sitting here with, right here with him, and I'm hearing the, con- I'm hearing the conversation because I couldn't get it on it on my own computer, so I'm here at his house, and I just want to know where to actually look at the documents so I can actually get an idea of what I'm looking at. Because I've also... Send me an email. Send oh. me an email. My email address is ppd... Papa, Papa, Delta. At, at. Huh? Papa, Papa, Delta. Yes. ppd... Farm, F-A-R-M, F-A-R-M... F- Fox F A R M, which is Foxtrot Alpha Romeo Mike. Okay. The Al- number one. One. The number one. USA. Affirmative. At Yahoo. At Yahoo dot com. And tell me you want the documents, and I'll send them to you, and I'll also send you the link to get onto the group site. Thank you very much. I will be in contact as soon as um, I get I, I home. And, here. I, here. and uh, I thank you very much. I appreciate this. By the way, my name is Ray Owen. Okay. Thank you much, and I apologize for uh, cutting in. No, that's okay. That's what this is for. Yeah. It's an open mic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And by the way, you're awesome. You've actually, I've done a a lot of things on my UCC filings and everything. It's sort of thrown me a little bit off. But you are right in in the question to change the mentality of how this works. I just um, got a couple of questions that I actually would like to ask you personally. So I'm just going to pay off and I'll ask them to you in the email that I sent to you. Which okay. I think, um, but thank you, and let's get back to well, business. Well, unless, unless you think the questions might be pertinent to the other people on the call here, go ahead and ask them now. No, it's just basically about the accounts, uh, which when you were talking about um, the social security number and, or which one is the account, the real account, the one, the number on the social security card or the number that's on the birth certificate. Which I didn't well, get. Well, see, the Social Security number is an accessing port, okay? <clears throat> okay. It's like your savings account at the bank. Okay. Okay. That basically goes over and draws money out of your checking account. See, in their world, they operate the opposite of a normal commercial bank. Mm-hmm. In a normal commercial bank, the checking account can, can draw money out of the savings account. But in their world, the savings account, which is the Social Security account, can draw funds out of the checking account, which is the assets in the Certificate of Live Birth Depository account. Oh, okay. Okay. Everything in their world is the counter, is the opposite. Yes, the mirror I've image. That. I've actually seen that, so I understand the principle behind it. 
Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for explaining that. And whatever question I got, I'll be getting in touch with you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right now. Bye. Perfect. Let's mute this. Hello, Patrick. Yeah. This is Kevin. I have a question. When you do a 1099-C, uh, is it a, a appropriate to do a 1099-OID to regain what you, you're counseling? No. If you're canceling something, basically uh, uh, cancel it, okay? Okay. What is the purpose of doing it? You can't make a cancellation. Hmm? You can't get – make it – okay, you've got a utility bill. You got the service. Right. You need to make the payment. Okay? Right. No, you can't turn around and try and get money on the other side of a deal. Right? Okay. 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 Is that is that applicable to a, like a credit is that applicable to like a credit card? Your credit card provides you a service, but you pay interest on that credit card. So would it be applicable to file a 1099-C to discharge that part of the portion of the credit card and then do a 1099 OID to regain the the, uh, the assets you paid out of your pocket as far as what is the, which would be the interest? Yes. Anything you paid out of your back pocket, you can turn around and claim back, and you do a cancellation of, see, you're supposed to be the indemnified, okay? Right. You're okay. fictional. Your bankrupt person is the indemnifier. He's supposed to be paying right. the bills using the counterfeit okay. money system. Okay. Okay, now I understand what and you're saying. So if you, I buy a car, a cashier, if I buy a car. That you as the cashier have to process that counterfeit instrument and make it and turn it into a lawful payment. That's why you have oh. to do the countersigning to turn it into make it lawful, make it legal. Okay. So I understand you now. So if I, if I buy a person have a car and I pay $10,000 for it and my interest on that is $8,000, that's the interest I'm paying out of my pocket so you can regain that back, and, but you can discharge the $10,000 portion of it. I understand. But, okay, but you get tied up with the little nickel and dime things and you're going to be uh, – worried about all of that little shit and basically the big thing is going to go right by you. Well, I, I was just asking the question so I can get, a, a, get the principles in regards to other things, in regards to revoking all the other stuff. I just want to see how the principle, how to apply it. And, and, and I understand we want to take ourselves out of the system, so I just want to make sure I understand the bottom part of the system so when I get to the, the, the top part of the system, I'll be able to be more effective. That's all. Okay, okay. Patrick? Yeah. Um, I have an EIN number, and it starts with 41. Is, um, is it necessary to have an EIN number that starts with 98 to do the international banking? Well, what do they call that uh, number that you have? They, do they call it a foreign grant or trust, or do they call it an estate? Estate. Okay, then that is over your – you've uh, processed and declared your fictional person dead. Now you have to turn around and 
that you need to contact uh, the uh, Cincinnati or that number that's on the top of the uh, SS4 that I have posted up there and try and call them up and get a foreign grantor trust EIN. Okay. You will terminate the one, okay, the estate, when you terminate all your uh, documents under your trade termination. Oh. And then you should be left with just one EIN after that point in time, okay. which would be your uh, foreign grant or trust EIN which, therefore, it is an exempt EIN. Okay. We're getting an awful lot of paper rattling and speaker feedback again, so I'm going to do a star five and mute everybody out, and then Patrick and whoever answer, wants to answer a question come back in with stars. Okay. Okay, am I back on, Tom? Yes, you're back on. Okay. Can I ask a question when you get a break there? Yeah. Uh, I just want to find out some of the stuff I've been watching, looking at Patrick's work. He did the ID card thing that he's uh, identification, and he's got Van Buren Township. I live in Seattle, and I ask about townships. They don't have a clue. <laughs> To uh, the township because it's an incorporated be city. Is stop, it? stop, stop. That is going to have to be modified to basically make that document uh, out here what you are now a private international banker. But when you go in and do your termination with the Secretary of State, you're going to go to them, and they're going to, you need to have international documentation to operate within that state. It's just like somebody from France coming over here to uh, Iowa or to California. They need now to have international documentation within the state, so you need to go to the international window at the Secretary of State's office and get international uh, documentation so you can operate in this international territory. Okay, I would make an ID up to reflect that. And then okay. go down and get my fingerprints put on it. I can uh, go to the police station and they do that free here to um, get a, a, a lawful ID card. Would be an international ID. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You, Excuse me, Patrick. You get other stuff learning. Ray again. Okay, and, and then you can turn around and do some of this other stuff. Hey, Ray. Yes. Uh, when we have, I have a personal world passport um, from the World Service Authority. Uh, can that be counted as an international document? It is a legal passport. And it is an international passport. It would be better if you went to the uh, uh, Secretary of the State of the United States of America and got an international passport out of them. Okay. Now, see, you need to go to the international window at the Secretary of State's office, at the Treasury office. Okay. We've been going to the public window. We've been going to the public window. Like I said last night, you're in the biggest casino in the country. Now, the cashier's cage has the Joe Blow cashier windows where all the, the small players go to. It also has a high dollar window. But, lo and behold, off to the side, there is an international window at that cashier's cage. You're going to the wrong window. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the tip, and I will use that. 
Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick. You're welcome. And by the way, on the address you had given me, uh, it would be Papa Papa Delta Foxtrot Alpha Romeo Mike 1 at US, USA. One okay. USA. One USA. Perfect. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just Out. sent you some documents back. I just sent you some documents back. So you should have an email in your box. Okay. My my email is one four numerals ray owen at gmail dot com. You got it on the email I sent it. Okay, you. perfect. I sent it on the email address. Thank you very much and I apologize for taking your time. No problem. Okay. Okay. Some more? Any more questions? The bankruptcy court that we're going to, that's for our district, our state, right? Whatever district you're in, whether it be southern, northern, or, or, or central? Well, no, you're going to the U.S. Marshals in that district, but you're you're going to your court in your kitchen. You're going to hold your court at the kitchen table. You're holding a private banking court. All courts are nothing but banks. And you are a private international banker, so you can hold your private court at your kitchen table. <clears throat> okay. Okay, okay, man. Still... Yeah, and you hold your court and then you tell yourself the clerk to write up the orders. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I have one question here, a quick one. Uh, official letters patent. I'm trying to get all these documents redone, and it says uh, Jenny Ryan American Legacy Owner dash P E O in caps. Does that stand for people, or is it what is that for? P E O uh, is Principal Executive Officer. It's the okay, first three I got letters. <laughs> it's the first okay, three thank letters. You. Listen, listen. It's the first three letters of people. The word people means principal executive officer per, uh, which is another P, laws, L, eternal. Wow. Well, that's very good. That, and that's, you... what, that's what people stands for in the Constitution. People executive officer. Principal. Principal, Principal I mean. executive officer per laws eternal. If it's he people. listens to the early audios, he'll get that. He's not listening to the early audios. Yeah, I haven't. I don't yeah. know anything about that. I got to go. I got a lot yeah. of research to do. But yeah, there's, but there's some there, there are some affidavits out there explaining yourself as a principal executive officer. Oh, now I can. Uh, uh, well, I thank you very much because yeah, you're when I go over this to... paper, I got to do it in such a manner that I know what every little dot and I is. And he's got Mr. Patrick Divine, and my last name is Little. So would I use Mr. Little, comma? I mean, Mr. Little, comma Donald. I don't have a middle name. Listen to the audios. Listen to the audios. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and the and the calls. Got you. Go all the way back. I got it. I want to download everything you got that I go into on top uh, on that uh, group that you got. Okay. So the easy, the easy, easiest way to download everything is to go to eConcurrent.com slash divine. Okay. Put it there on a hard will, drive there, or something. 
there you will see a calls.zip and a files.zip. It'll, it'll be about a gigabyte and a, and a quarter for the whole thing. But uh, Wow, okay. Well, I thank you very much. It's what I'll do. Hey, hey Patrick, you guys, I'm, yeah. um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at this uh, National Bank Act of 1864, the document you put up for that. And um, I just had a question about, I was reading down where it was talking about the, um, uh, what is it? I mean, I got you. Got to realize that a lot of that in that banking act was for the civil side of the government. Yes. To allow them to wanted... write bonds. Okay. So that doesn't have anything to do with the um the private side. No. See, like they, the they, they they just the capacity that we're coming were given, in. They gave themselves authority to utilize the Treasury's asset in the private, okay? Because it, cause it was talking about. Them. Yeah, because it was talking about the formation of an association and having a certificate of association when you're coming in to act, um, operate as a bank. And I was just curious as to whether or not that. Um, that a trade agreement was to stand as pretty much our private certificate of association between our three persons that we're working with in our private bank, international bank. Is that how you were tying that into this um this act right here or very close, yeah. But like I said, a lot of that, I just put that up there because basically they were trying to limit uh, the money changers coming in and uh, uh, taking control out here. And see, that's about the same time that Lincoln came out with the greenbacks, okay, to counter uh, what the bankers were trying to do out here. Uh, and they wanted 30 33% interest or something to loan money to the government to fight uh, the Civil War. Watch the movie International about how these bankers come in and basically create a false debt. They never give you nothing. Watch the movie uh, Something for Nothing. The devil never gave uh, what's his name? Anything. It's a, is it not something for nothing or shortcut to happiness? Something for nothing. Okay. okay. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the movie. Uh, when we talked about it before, I thought you said shortcut for happiness. And in fact, when I Googled... Well, uh, is Whatever it, it is, it's it shortcut to happiness. Just, right. just a second, just a second. Shortcut to happiness, 2004. Right. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. But yeah, it's it's really you're getting something for nothing. You and Mickey, the devil can't give you anything anyway. The bankers can't give you anything. The government can't give you anything because they have nothing to give. They're just turning around and giving your own shit back to you. But they're utilizing your shit during the process.
Okay, any more? Next question. We've run out of questions. Go ahead and call tonight, Jen. Okay, and thank thank you again, Patrick, uh, very very much. Okay. And I think we'll we'll all go at this and become proficient on how how to use these simple tools. Uh, you've given us the tools; we have to figure out what we want to build with it. Yeah. Thank Patrick? you, Patrick. Patrick. Okay. Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. On the back of our counter signing on the mortgages, rather than rating for the 1099 OIDs, uh, you know, like you say, we just do a 15C and cancel it and send this uh, the 1099C and cancel the debt. But we also then, in our counter uh command or or counterclaim ask for a manifest uh counting of our accounts to settle the account of what we paid in with the bank yeah bank mortgage with company no ever yeah you can call them up right now and get that Actually, my bank wouldn't give me that. Really? No, I'll Wells run Fargo would Same problem. Well, basically, tell them you'll take them to court uh, uh, under counterfeiting uh, and conspiracy to defraud. Well, I'm just saying that if I countersign it and send it back in to them, try to get the mortgage yeah, can. What I'm telling you, you can put that down as a uh, counterman or a counter a claim. Right, that's you what I would. Counter claim on there. You can list 15 different counter claims you want to put on there. I put as think a counter. You think you have to brainstorm. I put as a counter claim. I wanted a reconveyance of my property in my name. I mean, you really, you really need to think about what you want. Yeah, you put and then you slide it across the table to them. Okay, now it's in their hands. Yeah, they had the match. Yeah. How's the guy got a question? Okay. There was, there was some talk about the UCC three in, in regards to this, this this process. What has that to do with what we what we're trying to do? The UCC three, I mean. Three. Yeah. Somebody mentioned it last night. I, I didn't know. Somebody. Yeah, I tried to explain that last night. Uh, that uh, this uh, basically takes the place of a UCC three. We want to stay out of their world. We want to operate in the private. Okay. Okay. We done? Yes. Any more? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Patrick. I think it's a wrap. It, it's been a very good call. Okay. I think, I think we yeah, all appreciate care. it. Okay. okay. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Patrick.